Cartoon Cartoons. Hi everybody, this is Black Rider Ranger, and welcome to a wacky, zany, over-the-top cartoony livestream by yours truly. Today, we celebrate the 29th anniversary of, uh, um, yes, you can, yes, Mickey, you can request. Um, well, um, but today we celebrate the 29th anniversary of what is or was the greatest TV channel for cartoons, Cartoon Network. To celebrate, we will be looking back, we'll be looking back at a package of, one, of some of Cartoon Network's earliest creations, the Cartoon Cartoons, ranging from 1996 to 2003. This includes Dexter's Laboratory, Johnny Bravo, Cow and Chicken, I Am Weasel, the 1998 Powerpuff Girls, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, Mike, Lou, and Nog, Courage the Cowardly Dog, Sheep in the Big City, Time Squad, Robot Jones, Codename Kiss Next Door, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and Evil Con Carne. And in this live stream, all you gotta do is request me anything relating to either the, uh, um, to either the, um, Cartoon, Net cartoon Cartoons in any way you want if you have nothing to request just um ask me any question if you can like you can use the super chat system um are you a guy from fortnite uh no andrew but thank you for the question hmm. and the donation so thank you for that um, um oh um okay um um okay let me just uh, check this out thank you sebastian bandicoot <laughs> and also I've included some new rules on on the uh I've included some new rules on my uh uh live stream on the description because uh, I've been receiving some complaints from some of the fans recently like um the fact that they um often keep getting bullied for some of their requests and some some people keep keep uh, pestering others of their requests they 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 say no 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 you should use my request don't use that person now that is something i will not tolerate so please if you e even if even if you may not like other people's requests do not shun them do not uh, call them out do, do not bully let's say do not bully for those requests yes it's my job to pick which one is worthy of a request yes and if, it, if it's donated i'll have to do it immediately but uh also um also uh and if you if you if you uh block if you keep uh doing this this um, you'll be uh, you'll be on a timeout, but if you repeat it, you might get permanently blocked. So please do not do it, okay? And also, do not spam your request. No matter how many times you want me, you want your request to be done. I ish, please do not uh, spam so much of it. Let other people who oh, take a shot with their requests. Okay. As as SpongeBob says, bring joy to the world at the things you do, but the world does not revolve around you. Don't be a jerk. It's Christmas. Wait, what am I saying? It's it's cl it's not Christmas. It's more closer to Halloween than anything. And uh, here's another. Uh, speaking of Halloween and Christmas, um, when it comes to the Nightmare Before Christmas, which season do you guys see it in? Do you see Nightmare Before Christmas on Halloween, or do you see Nightmare Before Christmas on, well, Christmas? Let me know in the comments.
Now, if I remember correctly, in the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Billy, whenever, sometimes when Billy screams, he has fewer teeth. Uh, don't forget his ear, because Billy is without his ear, because uh, he is human. He may be stupid, but he is at least human. <laughs> Here we go, fellas. We have um, an art, an art to zolt, an art to zolt, and Billy has his tongue on it. And boy, was it painful! So that's the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy done. And uh, what was the other person's? Uh... Oh, uh. Okay, let me see. Uh, somebody else. Uh, oh, okay. Um, oh, sorry. Some. Um, sorry, uh, oh, great. Where did I? Uh, where did I uh, go through again? Okay. Um, okay. Isn't that that shark thingy again? Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, a uh, pink fong. I meant. <sighs> I keep thinking. Uh, oh, whenever I see pink pond, the th the thing that pops in my head is that. Baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 Uh, 2017 Webby or 1987 Webby? Because, uh, if I remember correctly, the Webby in the 1987 version does act a bit more like Dee Dee. The, in, the one in the, the one in the 1980, uh, the one in the 2017 one, she acts, uh, I, I, um, okay, I, I will admit, I haven't seen, I haven't seen the DuckTale 2017 DuckTale, so, um, I, uh, uh, well, it's, her character is a bit more different from her, from her 1987 counterpart, let's just say. Grim is voiced by uh, <laughs> and he said hi that um what was it again? Um uh
um, Index is laboratory. Index is lab. <laughs> and now there's there's Huggy, and now for um. Again, uh, which, which, oh, I'm um, just a minute, I have to finish the, uh, to finish the, um, okay, um, oh, okay, according to this, uh, the twin, all right, all right, all right, <laughs> um, I will admit, when I was a kid, um, I, I assumed that anything that was made by Cartoon Network Inc. Was, was immediately called a cartoon cartoon. And I was often scratching my head why the cartoon cartoon logo intro wouldn't play with, uh, wouldn't play with um, in Samurai Jack. Until recently, I researched it. It was. It was. It turns out, Samurai Jack was not meant to be. Was not meant to be um, part of the cartoon cartoon line. No, it's supposed to be. I think it was. I'm not sure. Maybe it was the first Cartoon Network show, aside from the Moxie show and the Space Coast to Coast. Space Ghost Coast to Coast to not brand the cartoon cartoon brand. And it wasn't until 2004 when the brand got retired, with shows like Foss, every other sh every show from Foss, from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends to present does, does did not have a uh, did not have the uh, uh, cartoon cartoon um, uh, label. But I, um, um, although they still played that cartoon, cartoon, uh, jing, although they did still play that cartoon, cartoon jingle in the, uh, Whenever any Cartoon Network show who would play he, on some of the other Cartoon Network made shows, like um, I remember Ben 10 had that jingle at the end, and Foster's had that jingle, Camp Lazlo had that jingle, and and uh, others. But it, it it that is until Cartoon Network started using a different type of jingle at the end, like uh, instead of. Do 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 do. They go with da 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 da. Do da da da.
Here we go, fellas. We have um, we have um, Hoggy and Webby dressed up as Dexter and Dee Dee. Now, um, where was I? I think uh, I've lost track. Um, what was the? Uh... Okay, let's see. Um... Ah. Okay, so um. I heard... Okay, let me see. What was that again? Um, hmm. Alright, let me uh, let me have a look at that. Let me have a look at the character. Whenever I... When I do with OC... Again, in case you've forgotten, I often have a bit of trouble with OC characters. So, uh... So, uh, I need... I need somebody to post me what the character looks like. Do you know what the character looks like, Antonio? I need to, uh, know what, what the character looks like first before... Before um, um, proceeding, okay, I'll be right back. Let me try. Let me see what else is. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I'll come back to that in a moment. Let me just do this. Some um, other person's. Um, requests that um didn't didn't explain during donation but um Thought of something, uh, Fred. Hmm. That'd be a little bit of a bless for me if, uh, if I were to draw some uh, other network shows for cart for something relating to Cartoon Network. It's just, it's just me. But then again, I do remember that some of the creators of these cartoon cartoons, they did work with other networks. Um, for example, um, Jane, um, Craig McCracken, the creator of the Powerpuff Girls and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, he would later be the guy responsible for, for, the, cartoon, for the Disney cartoon Wander Over Yonder.
Did he also make something for Mac Netflix, or was that Jendi Tartakovsky? I, I, I'm having trouble with, with... I'm having a bit of a memory problem. Let me just, um... Add some white outlines so you can... Oops, nope, that's the wrong one. Hmm, nah. Hmm. Sorry, something is not quite right. That's, that's, uh, that's more like it. Just trying to make sure the, um, proportions are right. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll stop right here. So, um, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. There we go. Goofy is Johnny Bravo. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, all right, so where did I... Uh, see, so... Um, so I still do, I still haven't uh, I still haven't gotten a description for what uh, Antonio's um, um character looks like. Just um Ah, ah, I found I found the character now. So the kit oops, that that that's not it. Um so this is what the character looks like. Alright. Mm. So according to um according to uh this um no, Rover is meant to be like a combination of Sonic the Hedgehog and Crush Bandicoot. Yeah, it makes a lot of hmm, makes sense since uh, Crush Bandicoot was originally placed Sony PlayStation or Universal's attempt to try and cash in on the success on Mario and Sonic, but then he became his own a popular character in his own right. So much so that in Japan, there was a bootleg of there was a bootleg of fake cra of a, of a Crash Bandicoot with very strange looking teeth, and be and um he decided to mock Japan. Um, in Crash for Crash Bandicoot 3, the creators decide to do a mockery on that and create fake Crash. And ironically, he became more popular in Japan. I I think I may have said this many times before, but I don't know, it's fun to talk about a bit of history. 
while I'm doing some some uh, drawing. Yeah, I think um, yeah that this version, this character Rover, he has a he has a, a something on his um, chest. I think it's like something blue or something. Um, Right, um, and now for <laughs> his, his companion. Um, I'll just wipe that. S And when I was a kid, um, um, in my country, uh, cow and chicken and I and Rizzo, they would always run as separate shills. They were never, they were never seen together. Although I did, I did notice the similarities between both cow and chicken and I and Rizzo. Why, why they have the same style? Why they have the same um, art style? Why they have some of Heck, IR Baboon has basically the same voice actor as Cal, Chicken, and the Red Guy. And sometimes Cow and Chicken and the Red Cow and Chicken they would be uh, they would cameo in uh, I Am Weasel. And the, the Red Guy is is probably a lot more prominent. I never seen Cow and Chicken in I Am Weasel in my entire life. <laughs> Now, now, this might not be for... Now, it is a show that's probably not for every... Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that was a mistake. Hmm. Let's see here. Um, I have heard about it, but I have not watched it. Um, now, it is a show that may not be for everybody because it does have... Because some of its humor may require some specific taste. It can get gross at times, and uh, it, sometimes the nonsense can be a bit over the top. I mean, who has is who would come up with an idea of an action figure that's a soldier, but he has weenie arms? <laughs> Let's see. Hmm.
Listen, tell me. There's peasants talking. Now here's something I didn't realize as a kid. Um, cow and chick chicken's waddle is actually meant as a as a meant to look like uh, something I don't think I can mention on the in t on YouTube because it's uh, it's uh, it, it's highly suggestive. But that's what it, but that's what um, the the the. The character, the uh, design is like for his waddle. <laughs> I mean, there's a, an episode where where chicken goes to cow, accidentally flungs himself into cow's stomach, and he uh, he comes across these amsires of which the red guy says they are questionable of questionable morals. <laughs> And one of the enzymes was a uh, fondling with ch with chickens waddle. <laughs> like I said, this is a very weird show. Oh, and I love it. Uh, oh, you've met Charlie Adler. Congratulations. Hmm. Now remember, fellas, if I'm talking about Powerpuff Girls, I'm only talking about the 1998 version. We can all agree that is the superior er, version. Him. Not the rest of the other incarnations are sub par compared to the original i mean there's an anime where they where they say it almost resembles nothing like the original there's um there was this uh, 3d animated short which which they did bring back some of the original voice actors and of course there's um there's the infamous one made in 2016 and the less we said about that one the better Hmm. Uh, let's see. It says Charles Mer Martinet. Charles Martinet. Where do I know? Where do I know that person? It may pop in my head somewhere, uh, or I'll just look it up online. So, uh, what was it again? The only thing I liked about the rebuild was the was the character Blue Bell. Wait. Let me just let me just have a quick look. Hmm. Oh, her, yeah, that princessy character. Oh, I I heard some, but I hear some people are not particularly fond of that one because uh, it. Um, I'm not sure. I I see a lot of people were not particularly fond of either her or the episode that starred her. Her. A fun fact, um, I can see why this person requests me to have, uh, this, because, um, when, um, when Craig McCracken, the, uh, the, uh, creator of the Powerpuff Girls, um, left after the, after the Powerpuff Girls movie, which, while the critics did generally like it, they didn't, they say, it, they unfortunately bombed in the box office. Very cheap movie, he's sure, but it did not. Uh, but the seat, but the, it did not. It, it only barely made it more about uh, one point five of its. Mo how do I say this? Um, how do I say this? Um, uh, it it slightly it grows slightly more than its budget, but not by much. Let's say. And it and it really and unfortunately it was a bomb and it may have cost and it wasn't until uh, I think it wasn't until Teen Titans go to the movies when Cartoon Network would 
late would dare themselves to release another film in theaters. Eh? Um, wait, 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 um. Do not, no, uh, please do not make comments like that, okay? Hey, I gave you a chance to shine with your page requests. Now I'm just, I'm just giving other people a shot. Remember, these things are, whenever it's a free request, they'll be selected at random. And it actually makes sense with the, uh, like I said, um, after the movie, um, Jen, uh, Craig McCracken left it, and, uh, but there's the people who, but the Cartoon Network still wanted Cart the Powerpuff Girls to, wanted more episodes of Powerpuff Girls. So, um, after he left, he left it in the hands of, he left the show in the hands of Chris Savino. Yes, my friends, Chris Savino, the creator of The Loud House, was in charge of Powerpuff Girls in, in its uh, final two seasons. Not only that, he also was in charge of Dexter's Lab in its final two seasons. Hmm. With exception of the Chicken Pox episode and the, uh, and the, um, uh, ex with exception of the Chicken Pox episode and the, uh, uh Zoo episode. Which was the series finale. Uh, Jenny Karakowski had no involvement with uh, with uh, Dexter after after Ego Trip. Oh, sorry, something something just uh, popped up. Uh, no mind, I thought I, something just popped up. And then we dis and then we discovered boys. <laughs> Oh, so you remember the Powerpuff Girls episode, The City of Clipswill, the, an infamous scene where, an infamous scene where Bo Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup become teenagers. <laughs> They're bad, I know. <laughs> now, I, I am aware that some people actually do like do like the Powerpuff Girls in their teen forms? I I did remember seeing some fan arts on that, and uh, some say they are that they are better. This is a better uh, way of Powerpuff Girls as teenagers than uh, Bliss Bliss Tina, but that's not saying much. <laughs> and also, also, here's another funny thing about uh, the Loud House Powerpuff Girls connection. If you remember the episode Curses, is whenever whenever the Powerpuff Girls swear, a sound effect within the background plays. It's like a, like a policeman snoring, or a, or a dog barking, or the or the kettle boiling. It, it, they they act as the censored sounds. It's the same kind of censorship with with the Loud House. Whenever they uh, whenever they swear, like uh, Lincoln Lincoln uh, swore at Lori on on her phone and say you're a, and then Luna's doing the rock and roll like and that's why you're the worst sister ever. Yeah, I, I wonder if that I wonder if that was Chris Savino's inspiration that Pop Up Girls episode for the Loud House's type of censorship. Oh, um, oh, how I wanted somebody to make the, make a, something like, a request like that. Maybe not, not exact, not precisely what it is, but, but on the show. Yeah, let's see, um, huh? Oh, you mean that episode where, you mean that Simpsons episode where Homer, hmm, I think he was doing that, here's Judy! Type of thing. <laughs> it was a Treehouse of Horror episode. All right.
Oops. I would dread to see Ed, Ed, and Eddie rebooted because worst case scenario, he, they might end up with the uh, bean smile thing. The Simpsons may have been one of the first ones to start it, but somewhere in the 2010s, this tr the trend with characters with bean smiles got really popular. And people have stereotyped that art style as part of Cal Arts. Even though s some of the 1990s Cartoon Network shows, they were made by Cal Arts graduates. It's including, uh, I think it was Dexter's, Dexter's Lab and Pop Up Girls, they were made by people who actually did go to Cal Arts. Craig McCracken, maybe Jen Tarkovsky, I can't remember. Um, and Rebecca Sugar, like, like, I may have said this before, but Rebecca Sugar did not go to CalArts. She studied in New York. And, uh, Gumball was made in London. I d don't know where the whole, what, why the bean smile thing would suddenly connect with the whole CalArts thing. I mean, wasn't that... A name that uh, uh, John Chris Lucy, the guy who made Ren and Stimpy, calls for the Disney art style. Oh. Heck, some of the veteran Disney animators actually went to uh, CalArts, including Tony Bancroft, the uh, supervising animator for Pumba and Iago. And of course, and of course, I do, I do. Although I do get for some cartoons, there are some cartoons with that style that are made by uh, by some Cal Arts graduates, like uh, uh, Darren Nefsey, the creator of Star Versus, and Alex Hirsch, the creator of Gravity Falls. I do get that, <laughs> but really, that killing at Cal Arts is a stereotype. I always called them bean, bean style. Yeah, anyone notice that um, in some shots, Ed's uh, eye often keeps popping out from not connecting to the origin, not connecting to the rest of his body? Hmm. I'm sorry, that face still makes me grin. I don't know why. <laughs>
That's okay, that's it. Now I gotta draw the other ids. What happened to the stairs? My parents took them down because I am grounded. That's disturbing. Another thing worth noteworthy about the designs of the ads is that uh, is that um, the um, the kids of the cul-de-sac uh, <laughs> the, uh, is that uh, many of the kids of the cul-de-sac their tongues are often uh, their tongues are often different colors instead of the usual pink or red. 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 Is this is because according to the create to Danny Antonucci, the creator, that their tongues are like that because uh, they've been eating candy for so long. <laughs> hmm. On an unrelated side, would, would anyone like to see Tom and Jerry in a Scooby Doo crossover movie? I think we've had enough crossovers for for a while. Well, I mean, with with the Tom and Jerry crossover thing we've had in the past decade, with with something like The Wizard of Oz or Tom and Jerry Willy Wonka, and uh, Sherlock Holmes, and I also think Robin Hood. Even though Tom and Jerry did do a classic Robin Hood like uh, short in the old ages, but. I think we've had enough for for a while. A uh, uh, Tom and Jerry, well, actually, maybe not, because uh, Tom and Jerry did have a sort of a Scooby Doo like, um, did have a sort of Scooby Doo like um, uh, episode in the Tom and Jerry show made by Hanna Barbera in nineteen in the nineteen seventies. Yes. Um, I think it was called Castle Wiz and. Um, I won't say I won't spoil anything, but let's just say the outcome is quite underwhelming. And I heard Hanna Barbera themselves on were not pleased with uh, were not pleased with the, that short with those uh, cartoons. Two hours later. <laughs> Can you move along? I'm running out of time cards. I forgot I'm I'm not drawing Ed in the right posture. I mean I drew I drew Eddie in the right posture and Double D in the right posture, but I didn't draw Ed in the right posture. <laughs> I mean Ed is supposed to be like running backwards. Um, I mean have, with his with his head and his shoulders back. Uh, let's see, he's got a bit of sm oops. 
<laughs> wrong one. And sometimes their teeth are not even, so so I'm trying to replicate that. The only celebrity I've met is Dennis Sims. Hmm. I don't remember meeting a lot of a lot of celebrities, especially the voiceover ones. I I did remember meeting a an, a manga artist in in England, and uh, she was a temporary teacher, her uh, at, at my school, teaching me how to draw some manga. I have a book from her. Here we go, fellas. We have, uh, we have the Ed's, Ed Double D and Ed D running away from Homer Simpson. <laughs> I'm sorry, this still brings a smile to my face. <laughs> Get him, Homer! Core Canadian voice. Canadians are weird! I think I kinda already did a whole reptilian live stream. I mean, I did I did a whole lizard themed uh, live stream the other day, so I don't think I'll bother with that one. Okay, and what else is there? <laughs> now that one's pretty easy. Wait, wait, let's see if there's any. Do you hate the Powerpuff Girls Moral DK? Hey, um, well, um, well, I don't necessarily like it, but I, but when, I don't know about, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I have a bit of a sick sense of humor or something, but whenever Bubbles lisps because she, her tooth is missing, um, it's so cute. He's like, he's like, he cuss, cuss. <laughs> it's so gay. I'm sorry. It's just uh, cream. There is one Pop Up Girls episode I absolutely despise, though the uh, Sunblock episode. In my opinion, that is the worst thing, thing out of any the worst thing to come out of Pop Up Girls, the entire franchise. Every um, it's the worst thing from Pop Up Girls ever. Okay, not even anything from the 2016 remake was this horrendous. The in, in that episode, Pop of um, the Pop of Girls are. In that episode, the Pop of Girls they were they got a bit of a suntan. Uh, they had some. They they didn't put on some sunblock and they really tanned themselves. They really tanned themselves a lot in the sun and. The rest of the episode is basically just them tr struggling to struggling to move. They they tried moving and it's so painful in their armpits or their uh, or their uh, feet or anything like that. It takes so long. It takes so long for the episode to yeah, especially for a 10 minute episode. Yeah. The dead golfing part in Dexter's lab was far less painful. And it also reminds me of the day I, I had some sunblock block and it was some I got sunburnt and it was not a pleasant feeling. So why would anybody want to see that? The Pop-Up Girls currently struggling with sun 
burns. Yeah, there, there was a way to make sunburn related humor funny, but that was not that was that was not the way to do it. It was Ugh. Pop Up Ghost 2016 was better than that. There, I said it. Oh wait, what am I doing? I'm supposed to uh I'm supposed to uh What was I doing again? Um well, he does have a little something on his... Oh, wait, let me uh, just add in a little something on his... Um... Hmm. And another, th here's another funny thing about uh, Robot Jones. Um, um, let's talk about a little bit of Robot Jones. Out of all the, out of all the Cartoon Network shows, uh, Robot Jones is perhaps the uh, least popular of the bunch. Hint: It only lasted for two seasons with thirteen half-hour episodes. And um, and I heard that during behind the scenes, there was a lot of production problems. In the first season, they gave Robot Jones this robotic type of voice, which you would hear in something like Stephen Hawking or Wally. You know the uh, "Give me the plant," I would insist you get. I insist you get me the plant. And Robot Jones has a similar type of voice box thing. Yeah. And that was for the first season, but then in the later season, in the second season, they. Uh, they um in the second season they changed it. They had a they had a boy a little boy to do the voice of Robot Jones. And they and they redubbed it over season one. And later the executives wanted to change Robot Jones even more, but the creator refused and the series got cancelled. It's a very sad life for a robot. Still in the live stream. It was a Macintosh, yes. It was also used with something like Perceptor from uh, Transformers Animated. To be honest, Mike Lou and Nog aren't my thing. Yeah, I heard that now out of now perhaps now nowadays I hear Mike Lou and Nog as a lot of people's least favorite of the Cartoon Network uh, cartoon cartoons. I hear more and more people having a dislike for Mike Lou and Nog. Oh. Um, I was in tanned ever once in my life. They, huh. Yeah, you don't enjoy the beach, do you then? I remember a time when Courage the Cowardly Dog would never stop rerunning in my country from until around probably 2016 or even or even a little bit later. Courage the Cowardly Dog was always on Cartoon Network. It was always there. Although there are some episodes I I don't remember seeing on TV. I think one of them is the uh, the the mask, the one where um. 
where this uh, rat, where this um, cat is trying to uh, tries is trying to uh, run away from trying to was um, she hides herself in a mask, mask and um, she um, she starts beating up courage because she believes that all dogs are bad, especially since one of her since her best friend since her best friend is a uh, is is with another dog named um, named Mad Dog. Hmm. Oh, yeah. She thinks that, and ever since then, she had that mindset that all dogs are bad. Now that that one might have been now that one might have not aired in my country because of its theming, like uh, it's implying some. It's implying some uh, some types of subjects which may, which back then would have been really frowned upon, but nowadays we're being a bit more accepting, especially with shows like Steven Universe. Just trying to clear some space. Now here's a funny thing about the and now going a bit off topic. We're not talking about the about uh, Cartoon Network. We're talking about what this a person a subject based on this person's request. Um, um, the Mister Men series. Apparently, there's another Mister Little Miss character named Little Miss Scary, and it's not and the character is not. Uh, is the character is not um, uh, uh, the the one that we're familiar with? Not the one that the red one with the spiky hair. It's um, it's um, in, in in the wake of in the wake of the Spice Girls. There was a character. There's a character modeled after one of the Spice Girls named Little Miss Scary. And the other one is named Little Miss Baby, the other is Little Miss Sporty, and the other is Little Miss Ginger. Hmm. I've forgotten the... I've forgotten... Um, actually, I do remember the names. I'm just worried if somebody... I'm just worried if some... Someone asked me some... Ask me in the in the chat mode, who is it? Who is that uh, Spice Girl often called Scary? Here we go, fellas. We have Little Miss Scary scaring courage. Um, what was it? Oops, uh, something went wrong. <laughs> um, where's my dinner? <laughs> okay, um, there's Courage the Cowardly Dog. Still have plenty of time. This might be a two hour. Or, uh, this might be a two hour one, so, um, looks like we have only got, um, Mike Lewinog, Sheep in the Big City, Crime Squad, Covenant Kiss Store, and Evil Con Carne. And then we move on to another, er, uh, for Cartoon Network, for Cartoon Cartoons. We interrupt this program to bring you Courage the Cowardly Dog Show, starring Courage the Cowardly Dog. Abandoned as a puppy, he was for, he was found by Muriel who lived in the middle of nowhere with her husband, Nielsen's bag. But creepy stuff happens out of nowhere. It's up to Courage to save his new home. Stupid dog, you make me look bad. Ooga, ooga, ooga. Not a fan of Steven Universe. <laughs> okay.
Kooky, aka number three. I don't know. Is this a bit frowned upon? The fact that she, uh, she's a, uh, she's the. The fact that she often closes that she often closes her eyes. I mean, um, I mean nowadays it's a bit of a nowadays it's a it's a stereotype that that Asian characters are often very squinty, which is why most anime characters they off they're often shown. They're often shown with very big eyes. Another <laughs> the thing with uh, with the uh, kids next door is that they their hands are massive, so massive in fact. Now normally I like to draw just up to four fingers, but in kids next door case I'm making an exception. I mean, how else can one count from five, four, three, two, one? Bam. Uh, to just to make sure you're still seeing number three, I'm keeping her shoes. Hmm. Also, here's another funny thing. If you look at the uh, at the uh, ending credits of Kids Next Door, you may notice that it's a bit different from the other from the other credits. I mean, I mean, instead of saying voice actors, they say vocal assault, and they enlist the voice actors like uh, Ben Diskin, Laurel, Laurel, Lauren, or Laurel Tom, Cree Summer, and D. Bradley Baker. Um, and they, they say tactics or something like that. Let's make a delicious cake. What's your favorite kids next door villain? Oof, that's too many to count. I mean, a lot of them are my favorites. Um, uh, I guess some, um, I, I, I need to, maybe I need to rewatch kids next door, but there are so many villains I adore. There's, a uh, um, they're all very unique. There's uh, Grandma Stuffin, the Common Cold, Count Spankulot, Sticky Beard, Night Brace, the Toilinator. They are some of my fa- these- those are some of my favorites. And of course, let's not forget the delightful children from down the lane. 
or even father. I don't know. There's something about the villains that I I really I really do enjoy, and I and I don't know which one is a is a big favorite of mine. Maybe the only maybe the only one I often have maybe there are a few I might have raised some eyebrows with is like one of them being the professor or doctor what uh, the guy with the turtle shell in his back or he later has a claw on his hand or squid like octopus this professor guy i mean yeah, he first appeared in kenny and the chimp which was uh, warburton's original um pitch for original pitch for um uh for his show before they decide to go with kids next door Anyways, uh, Mike Lewinog, Time Squad, Sheep in the Big City, or Evil Concarne. We're sorry, the ads are closed. Fun fact, Lauren Time and the voice in the Montreal was on Sesame Street. Hmm. I think they did that with the show with the, th in the, the cards with the theme of the show. Again, the ads are done. So, uh, which one is it? Should it be Evil Concarne, Time Squad, Sheep in the Big City, Mike Lou and Og? Which one should it be? <laughs> if, if they had big figures, they'd be huge, like adults. Oh, okay. All I really remember from Mike Lewinog is that uh, uh, Mike, the 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 ginger girl, is a, I think it was an exchange student or asked to explore the island or something, or maybe a castaway, and um, she she befriends the natives, and some of them include uh, Og and uh, Lou. Hmm. It was a rare occurrence where there's one boy, there's one that uh, there's a one. It's a rare occurrence of a trio where it's a boy, one boy and two girls. Usually it's two guys and one girl, or all all boys or all girls. It's very rare that it's a uh, two boys and one girl. I think the only thing I, the, there's only one episode of Mike Lewinog I actually did remember seeing as a kid, uh, was the one where, was the one where, um, I think it was when they went to when they uh, they had the school, but they they have no, but the they had no idea what the te how to, te the the there was I I think I think it was trying to give out the concept of how to teach. I mean, none of the... I think, um... They tried out several of the natives as teachers, but they, uh, many of them failed. That is until... That is until they settled with one, who's the, uh... I'm having a trouble... I'm having trouble remembering. Hmm. Oh, I forgot, dude. He's, um... 
most of the characters are. <laughs> I forgot. Lou Og has a ha, is is wearing practically nothing. I better cover that up. Yeah, he does have a he does have a little something to block in, but aside from that, he's practically naked. Oops. <laughs> Cannot allow that on. If it wasn't for that loincloth, I probably won't, or, or whatever else that was covering it, I probably wouldn't be allowed to show him on a live stream. There we go, we have Ugg riding on a rhino. It's my request. I'm telling you, I'm done. I'm done with the Eds. And I'm just gonna put him on a timeout until he gets the memo. Oh, if you want, you. <sighs> just, uh, just putting him on a bit of a timeout. Hmm. Yeah, and the again, the Eds are done. We move on to something else. All we have is. Sheep in the Big City, Time Squad, and Evil Kung Carne. Miss, uh... <sighs> Wait. Oh, uh... Oh, hey, hello. Hey, do do I? Hmm. Um, sorry, I'm just uh. Hmm. Hmm. I was... Oh yeah, I remember you! Uh, hi! Um, ladies and gentlemen, the voice of Betley in uh, my Double Dragon Decade animation, Be um, Brandon Barney. Hey. Hmm. Did you know Grey Griffin voiced Move Farn Butterfly, Frankie Foster, Lona Lana, and Nimli? She also voiced Mandy in Billy and Mandy. Hmm. Um. You know, the, the person, now, in, in some of my previous podcasts, I remember this person kept asking me to draw this uh, Mo Williams, uh, uh, oh, Mo Williams, whatever. Um. Uh, I remember um, somebody, um, uh, the person who actually made that uh, the, the, that pigeon thing, he also had a hand in 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 drawing sh creating sheep in the big city. And I and I really I will admit I did like the concept of the show. Oh, but I don't think it has a lot of big focus. I mean, there are some episodes I did remember enjoying, like the one where uh, sheep had these uh, spinning plates. And the clearance day, clearance day, goody goody hip hooray. I thought it was like an equivalent of Christmas, clearance day. <laughs> now the general, basically he wants to capture sheep so he can uh, fit, so he can fit a sheep in this sheep shaped uh, hole for his cannon or something like that. <laughs> Is a very is a very strange villain, and another thing is that uh, his teeth are clenched. So whenever he opens, whenever he tries to speak, he never fully opens his mouth. Is is actually talking like this to catch a sheep? <laughs> yeah. So uh, what was that person? Uh, 
Oh, Mo, well, Milam's also worked in Kids Next Door. Huh. Oh, what was that? Um, I, I never noticed that before. So how does how does this uh, character um, knock out the uh, she? How how does how does this uh, character knock sheep out in the head? Morning, Sam. Oh, uh, morning, Ralph. Hmm. So, let me have a, let me have a look. Hmm. I think I'll have to include I'll have to include the uh, the uh, um, superpower later because I'm not sure how to properly translate it for. Oh wait, maybe I can. Yeah, that that should that should do the confusing part. Uh, that pun was intended. <laughs> Sorry, I'll shut myself up. There, I tried my best to have uh, Miss Magius Miss Confuse Sheep and the Head. Whoa, what happened? What happened? Something went wrong. Something. Um. Did I miss something? Somebody was, uh, 
Somebody, uh, somebody was having a bit of a fit or something. Open the fridge, varmint. Open it, I say. Close it, close. Um. Now, I do remember seeing a bit of Time Squad. It's, uh, basically it has, um, a, a little boy who it was very knowledgeable about history. Um, a very strong muscle guy and, um, and, a. C-3PO like character voiced by Mark Hamill. <laughs> See, I never heard of Time Squad. Um Okay. You know, it's very interesting that um, a, a person like Mark Hamill be at first be well best known as the same as the man who played um, Luke Skywalker from Star Wars, but later be known to do a lot of voiceovers like the Joker and Skips. He was in, of course, he was also in Time Squad playing a character which is which is meant to parody a Star Wars character. Um, he also, in fact, he was involved in Jim in a Jim Hansen project two twice. He had a guest appearance in the Muppet Show as uh, as the um, as both Luke Skywalker and Mark Ham and Mark Hamill himself, and he also. And a couple of decades later, he would play, he would play the voice of Askexes, the scientist in the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. And in the, in Legend of Spyro, he would be the voice of Malifor. And fun fact, they were supposed, in when during production of Skylanders Academy, they wanted Malifor, to be voiced by Mark Hamill again. But unfortunately, he was busy at the time recording for Star Wars. Here's The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. Because of that, he was, um... Because of that, he was replaced with, um, Jim Cummings, the voice of Darkwing Duck, Winnie the Pooh, and many other Disney characters. Now, although I do remember seeing Time Squad as a kid, I don't. There, there's not a lot of. I do. There are some episodes where I do remember, but I don't know really know what they were about. I mean, there was one episode where. Um, there was one episode where I think they were helping this guy that's supposed to be Napoleon, but his. Uh, I think his wife was. Uh, was angry about him or something like that. Um. There was even an episode where um, where um, Leonardo da Vinci was was acting, I think he was acting like a hippie, perhaps, and then he comes across they come across this um, woman who strangely resembles Mona Lisa. Oh, 
Of course, the real Mona Lisa does not exist, but the uh, the person who posed for the Mona Lisa painting, in nobody, had to... I'm not sure who it really is. I'm I'm not sure people had a had a great had a big grasp on who posed for Mona Lisa. Um. Oh um. All right, let me try this again. Um, there were two recent, um, um, I, it wasn't until I was looking up uh, recently, when I was doing my Legends of the Hidden Temple crossovers, I was trying to look up some, I was trying to look up some, uh, some candidates for my crossover series and one of them was a one of them was a um, uh, time squad and they had subjects that relate to Amelia Earhart and Genghis Khan I thought they were worthy to candidates Amelia Earhart fits very well but uh, the uh, Genghis Khan one uh, I, sh I think I should have chosen a better candidate so what was I doing again? Oh yeah, I'm supposed to draw um, the other character voiced by Mark Hamill. Skips is that um, he is one of the few main characters to be to have only five fingers. Everybody else has up to usually has four, but he is constantly drawn with the fifth finger. In fact, most of the regular show characters are drawn with only four fingers, but he's one of the exceptions. I say one because there is also the uh, the guy, the Death Kwon Do teacher guy, and uh, I think Death is also another one. And um, and another strange thing is that high five ghost. He's supposed to be have a high five. His his name is because he has a hand on on top of his head. But despite the name, it's not a high five. It's not really a high five if you only have four fing fingers. Yes. Um, but there are times when he can uh, stretch out additional hands, and sometimes they have five. Fingers, but for the most part, he's drawn with with a hand with only one hand that has only four. I don't know if I'm all allowed to show this. This uh, oh dear, I could get in trouble for this. <laughs> In fact, there was an episode of regular show where uh, they they met with Muscle Man, and uh, Muscle Man has um, tries to go with this woman name. I think her name was Starla, and uh, sometimes when Rigby would bump into her, he would accidentally um, press on her uh, <laughs> somethings, and sometimes when she's Ravi, they would. Uh, they would constantly move up and down.
And I was even, I also remember in uh, the episode where they had these uh, Olympic sodas that were expired in this, uh, they hired this party guy. And at one point they had a close-up on a woman's something. That got cut out in my country. In fact, a lot of things in regular show got cut in. Depending on which country you're in, they often get... Uh, a lot of Cartoon Network shows in the 2010s, they get censored in different, part of the, different parts of the world. Like Adventure Time, they go to this place of embarrassment and where characters are naked. That got cut in where I live. Even the drop ball part was shortened. Um, and, and in Amazing World of Gumball, during the uh, fingerprint guy who often kept saying, Hey, you suckers! He, they forgot to put the... They, they cut off the suckers part. Okay, all we got is Evil Concarne, so... Ah, uh, yes, I remember that. Something like this? You plank? You're a plank! No, you're a plank! So stop! We can all be planks! No, no, no thanks. <laughs> uh, ah, yes. yes. I, I remember... Sometimes when I'm at school, I would often draw Hector Con Carne because um, sometimes I get bored at school, I would just randomly draw Hector Con Carne. I think maybe maybe, maybe when I was a kid, uh, Evil Con Carne stuck out to me more than Billy and Mandy, but in the end, Billy and Mandy became a more popular choice. It wasn't until I got my my hands on the it wasn't until I got my hands on the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy video game that I started to become a humongous fan of Billy and Mandy. Yes, there was a video game in based on the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. It had uh it had a, it had about 20 playable characters. Uh, sadly, none of none of Evil Concarne. But um, he um, yes, this includes Billy, Mandy, Grimm, Irwin, Harold as Mogar, Eris, Nurgle, Fred Fredberger, Haas, Dracula, Jack, Nurgle Jr., the Boogeyman, General Scar, who did become a recurring. Character in Billy and Mandy after the show after Count Evil Concarne was bought, and uh, and Lord Payton, as well as some of the background, some of the background enemies you can also play as. Um, Now some of you might be asking me, why don't you include his clock hand like in the original well, games? Um, I think a, a... Some people prefer when he has actual, when he has uh, two hands, like uh, like in Nitro Kart and Nitro Field. Makes things a bit e 
Let's see here. I mean the um, the um, the thing in his middle is kind of enough. We have Hector Concarne controlling entrance. Okay, fellas, that's the end of that's the end of. Uh, okay, not this live stream, but uh, since we have twenty minutes, I I let's move on to the second chapter of the live stream, which is also related to cartoon cartoons. Let's move on to. Now, before Dexter's Lab, before Johnny Bravo, before the Powerpuff Girls, they before they became fledged series, they were all part of this other collection of cartoons, which would later be called the Cartoon Cartoon Show. But before they had, they went by this particular name. What? Uh? Cook a cartoon. Two, two. All right. So for now, I hope you guys uh, paid attention to the last time I talked about this uh, before you before the live stream appeared. That there are these uh, cartoon network pilots that never got off the air. I mean, even while well, Dexter, Powerpuff Girls, and and um, Courage, and some of the others, they managed to get picked up. They um, some of the others they never did, and. You, you'll be surprised with some of the people they got for some of them. For example, Fish and Chip was created by Butch Hartman, the creator of the Fairly Odd Parents. Full Paws was created by Chris Savino, the creator of The Loud House. Larry and Steve was created by Seth MacFarlane, the creators of Family Guy. And uh, Malcolm and Melvin were created by Ralph Bakshi, best known for creating the first X-rated animated film, Fritz the Cat. What about Samurai Jack? It is not an officially labeled as a cartoon cartoon. Hmm. Hmm. It was the first. It was one of the first Cartoon Network shows before two thousand and four to not have that cartoon cartoon title. And around, it was originally called. Now this was originally called Water Cartoon in the first season, but in the second season they renamed it to the Cartoon Cartoon Show. So which so we won't do all of them. We can only. We can only do like as much as whatever time limit we have. If I'm, I want to end, um, well, well, let me end. We'll end this at uh, sometime around uh, three, three p.m. East. East, let's say. Yeah. So, which ones do you want me to go with? Which which ones get the lucky picks? Okay. <laughs> now, a lot of these cartoons were in fact inspired by uh, Tick Savory. Heck, there was um, the guy who, who made Yucky Ducky would even have... Uh, the guy who made Yucky Ducky would also would try to make uh, an adaptation to one of Duck Tex Avery's creations. Um, I think it was George and Junior. Hmm. Huh. And it, as far as I'm aware, George and Junior, the, the George often keeps get beating up Junior, but he also gets beaten up himself.
<laughs> the fun fact, the uh, the voice of Wade Duck, Howard, the late Howard Morris, would later lend a hand in voicing in Cow and Chicken as the voice of one of Chicken's friends, um, Thelm. Apparently he is a bold rumpus. There we go, fellas. We have Yucky Duck holding Wade Ducks gloves might have enough room for one or two more maybe a three anybody else anybody else pick 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 hmm. who's your favorite sonic character hmm Yes, would you believe that this um this show was created by by one of the most um famous or infamous anime adult anime actors Seth MacFarlane. Hmm. Hmm. In fact, um Seth MacFarlane has had a a big hand in in animation and he um he did some uh, drawing for johnny bravo uh, he did help out with some of the other what a cartoon shorts <laughs> I 
Yeah, I'm just curious um, if uh, if um, Larry and Steed were were made today, would people would people might just accuse <laughs> Larry and Steve for just being ripoffs of Peter and uh, Brian? I mean, Brian. Uh, I mean, Killer Steve is a. Uh, Basically a prototype version of Brian and L Larry is basically a prototype version of Peter Griffin hmm. Hmm. Yeah. The owner is a very clueless man. He's like I was thinking maybe we could go to the uh, uh, The mall. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Um and he accidentally uh, does something crazy, which uh, Steve, maybe, maybe by by today's standards, it probably wouldn't be the best show because uh, it's a bit mean. It can be seen as a bit mean spirited. I mean, Steve didn't really do anything wrong, but Larry gets away with it. There's a way to make mean spirited humor funny, but um, perhaps if Larry and Steve were to ever be have to come out in fruition, they would have to change a bit. Then again, Family Guy was quite notorious for being mean, mean spirited from time to time, for the sake of comedy. But in some of the recent episodes, they they are often very frowned upon. Let's say, especially uh, screams of silence. <sighs> Larry and Steve is checked. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, oof. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> and next time, be a little bit more specific. Yeah, this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. Now, Steve, Larry Afton doesn't do, ain't exactly the brightest tune. Hmm. And, hmm. There, <laughs> not to mention John K. <laughs> uh oh. Ah. Is much worse than John K. and Butch Hartman. Hmm. Victor Sal. What? What's that person done? What is that person known for? Um. Aside from the controversy, what? Before the controversy, what is that person known for? Jeepers Creepers movie starting Justin Long. Okay, and what did he do that was controversial? Touchy hands. Oof. Oh dear. No, I, I tell you, fellas, that happened to me once. Oh, no, I didn't grab onto anybody. No, somebody grabbed onto my uh, tush. But um, I'm, it was only a one-time thing, so I'll let that slide for now. But if that person does it again, hmm, I must call them out. Uh, 
All right, uh, that's taken care of. Okay. Do you like Neil Diamond? I I might have. Hmm, I might have. Um, hmm. Um, I might have listened to a few of that guy's music, but uh, I don't think I know a lot of it though. That person wanted a rough. I nearly thought it was. I nearly thought Ruffy was like uh was like rough and ready from uh, Hanna Barbera. Hey, it looks like a looks like a brownish grommet with a mouth. It makes sense since they are made by uh, Artman. Wait, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah, he's um, he has a little something. Cannot forget about that. There's, uh, that's the best I can do with, uh, hmm. Uh, 
I'm actually thinking, fellow, should I expand this uh, live stream for another 30 minutes, or do you want me to end right here? Here. Um, where's that? Um, here it is. Just out of curiosity, do you want me to end here, or do you want me to expand for 30 minutes? Maybe another 30 minutes. What's your favorite Spongebob song, Mice House of Horror? Hmm, that's another good question. There's a lot of really good ones, like, uh, I'm a goofy goober, yeah, you're a goofy goober, yeah, or, I'm a goofy goober, hurrah, ba -da -ba -da -da -ba -da -da -ba -ba da well, if you, well, if you, <laughs> yeah, if you like, you can do something relating to some of the, um, expand or just end, maybe expand, uh, Um, well, 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 this one, this one's on the house. Do you hate Seth MacFarlane? Maybe not so much. As, okay, 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 again, again with the whole Eds thing. We are done with Eds, okay? We are done with Eds. That, 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 that ship is already sailed. The Eds are done, okay? <sighs> 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 You want me to do something full pars related instead? I mean, that's made by the same guy who created the Loud House. <laughs> um, I guess not a lot of people are know a lot about some of the others. Uh, I would rather talk about Seth than the Eds. Heck yeah. Um, so which one do you know? Any? Do you know anything else? Any other episode? Any other of the what a cartoons do you know? Hmm. 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 I told you that shirt was hideous. <laughs> um. Expanding it is. It looks very. Some of the design, although they are created by Spy, uh, although some a lot of them have different create. There's some of them have, some of them have, uh, um, some different designs. Hmm. Some of them, some of the design, even though they had different creators, some of the designs are a bit similar to one another. Here, like, um, Boyd and Worm, you could see something out of Dexter's Lab, or the, you could see something out of Dexter's Lab, or the, uh, or, um, me Johnny Bravo.
Hmm, let me just say, uh, let me just expand the bird a bit. I mean, expand the bird. I forgot you're supposed to say bird. Very simple feet. No, 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 it's the... Here we go, fellas. We have uh, Iki Koopa hoarding the Boyd and Worm. <laughs> hmm. 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 Blah, blah, blah. How much crazier can you get? Hmm. No, 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 no. Was it a, I, I think I was uh, looking for... Uh, oh, 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 I remember, I remember, sorry, sorry, I'm just uh, looking at... I think I'm... Yeah, that's it, that's the one. Now this is a very interesting, this is a very interesting thing with uh, the kitty bow, bow. It's one, it's a, it's a cartoon that, that's quite different from some of the other water cartoon. That's different from some of the other water cartoon shows. I mean, this one has a very different art style compared to the rest. There are almost no outlines. Hmm. 
Just to reduce the. Um... Ooh, <laughs> that that wasn't supposed to happen. When you're not doing, I'm supposed to, uh... Yeah, I think uh, compared to the uh, compared to um, some of the other cartoon cartoons, where they try to appeal to where they try to appeal to a classic care audience as much as possible, um, both old and new, um, Kitty Kitty Bobo, I think, is was meant more for a for an old for a. a for the younger crowd, um, the was for more modern audience at, at back at back at the today, like it was because uh, Kitty Bobo they used smartphones and stuff. It was not as time; it didn't have that timeless feel as some of the other cartoon cartoons. Now, granted, some of the cartoon cartoons, since they might have had some, they might have had some uh, outdated stuff, but they tried, they tried their best to be as timeless as possible, well, because uh, they want to try and appeal to, to as much as possible, not just for kids, but even 
adults who, and even if they, if they did appeal to kids, they would appeal to also those who would look back at their shows, like if they have enough rewatch value. This is why Billy and Mandy lasts for a, lasted for a very long time. It stuck with a lot of people's heads. Heads. And the stories could be told at any time. And uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie is another thing. Is another show that could be with stories that could be told at any time. Hmm. Um. The um. Something like Quack Pack or a goof or the Goof Troop. That was definitely made for the 90s with the slang and the lingo and some of the things that were popular at the time. Hmm. It wasn't like DuckTales where they were supposed to go on adventures. Here's they, they even teach some lessons that can still be relevant to this day. I mean, there was an episode where they discuss about inflation. Like, it's not good to have so much... that It's not good to have so much money because... If everybody has a lot of money, it loses value. Prices will go up. Everybody will have to have even more and more money. It's chaos. And um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, some of the characters are... Um, uh, uh, and there's even talks about child labor laws. That, yes, DuckTales even taught about that. It's still relevant to this day. Hmm. And... Oh wait, I forgot one more thing. Hmm. Maybe the show that they may have been frowned. Hm. Quack Street Boys. <laughs> I remember. I remember seeing. I remember hearing about that pun in the uh, House of Mouse. Um. Whatever you do, never ever look on the Gracie Films logo. Due to the screaming lady. So people prefer the shh. Do 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 do. Oh, okay. Uh, unfortunately, it's a bit of a pain to look up full pause because there's this um, there's this nutball who assumes. I know we don't really speak about. I don't. Re I know we're not supposed to really speak about this person, but. Uh, there's a man on DeviantArt who assumes that the mysterious Mr. Renter hates, hates faux pas because of, because he, he thinks that the guy, that Mr. Renter hates it for, because it has a similar writing to, to season five or season six of, uh, what am I doing? Season five or season six of um, Powerpuff girls even though that Powerpuff Girls seasonal rot review was in 2015 a year a year before the Loud House came out And keep in mind, he still has that mindset. I mean, the po that post he did was uh, was in twenty, not Mr. Enter, the guy who was accusing Mr. Enter. He uh, he um, posted this in twenty twenty, um, sometime sometime uh, um, af before or after Mr. Enter closed his deviant art because he couldn't handle the uh, stress with. Um, he couldn't handle the stress with the changes of DeviantArt and other things. It's like a harassment. Hmm. Hmm. 
He thinks he hates faux pas. Now, granted, faux pas isn't exactly the best show. I mean, the the woman does have a have a stereotypical Italian accent. Uh, she's like, uh, but you are still a naked, mamma mia, something like something like that. <laughs> And some have even said that the faux pas is a bit of a ripoff of Cat Dog because it features a cat and a dog, and even one of them is voiced by Tom Kenny. Hmm. And by the way, it's um, sh- um, the the old woman. She's not the she wrote. She may have been the inspiration for Rosa, but she's she also was probably the inspiration for another character in the Loud House, um, Aunt Ruth. Who's the um the um the woman who um the Lincoln the Loud siblings uh, aunt. So she, I wonder if Rosa would be like, uh, since she's the one with superstitions, just like Lynn, she'd be like, Who are you, imposter? Now, there's, there's not a lot of fan arts of faux pas with the Loud House. There are a few, but not many, and certainly not with the, with the woman. And I'm so glad. Um, now, if, if faux pas, actually, if faux pas was ever grimly, it might get frowned upon by the, the, women with, the woman with the stereotypical uh, Italian voice. Admittedly, I was a bit nerve. I mean, I did get in trouble for doing that type of voice when I actually was in Italy. Hmm. Hmm. I can imagine anybody getting in trouble for doing the Mario type of voice when uh, when visiting Italy, because he is a. He he was made by the Japan, voiced by an American, and he looks like a Mexican, but he's meant to be Italian. Uh, in some, uh, most people are familiar with the Mario type of voice, but there are other times when people are more are also introduced to him in different voices, like uh, the Brooklynish type of voice, as heard in the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Or, or in the Super Mario Brothers movie. I wonder what Chris Pratt would sound like as Mario. Oh, I mean, it's part of the cast. It was part of the announcement that the new Super Mario Brothers movie will have Chris Pratt. Is he going to sound like Mario? Is he going to have his normal type of voice used in something like uh, Jurassic World or... Uh, Jurassic World or the um, mm, Jurassic World, the Lego movie, and Guardians of the Galaxy. Is he going to try to sound like Mario? Is he um, uh, just out of curiosity? Does he sound like Mario? Perhaps he can do a... Maybe he can try and do a Mar... Rio voice, but but I'm I'm a little worried. Maybe it won't sound like, maybe it'll just sound like his regular voice. Maybe it'll sound different, like Bob Hoskins Mario, something like that. Okay, I think I have room for one more, just one more. Um, hmm. Okay. Um. Uh, 
a lot of ping pong types of requests I I get. Um, so what was that? Uh, ping, ping pong is the. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Kinda looks like a like a prototype of Dracula from Hotel Transylvania, yeah. and a little bit of the Count from Sesame Street. Oh, and he also looks like a bit like uh, like a flesh version of Nosfor A2 from Buzz Lightyear or Star Command, the one who's an energy vampire. Mm. I don't know if this is a uh, don't know if this is um Oops. Hmm. I used to th I used to hear hear that uh Shocktober quote from uh from um from a Cartoon Network commercial back as a kid. And, uh, did I forget to include the... Nope. There we go, fellas. And this concludes the live stream let me just check that off so i don't forget okay let's see what we got all 14 of the of the cartoon cartoons are checked and yucky duck mina and, and the count boyd the worm pizza boy faux paws larry and steve and the a kitty bobo show oh they're all completed and uh thank you for joining me in this in this uh very zany off the top cartoony live stream happy sharptober gang preparing for an early halloween birthday well I wonder what count duckula would think a reference to the infamous mascot ping huh? who is this who is this <laughs> i have one more thing to say go right ahead do you hate sonic forces I've only played it once, so maybe. I know one guy who's absolutely upset by this on DeviantArt, uh, and his name is Regulus314, and he kept posting how much he despised Sonic Forces. Whenever I just randomly pop into his thing, he would just bash about Sonic Forces, just talk about nonstop about his hatred for it. I try to avoid. I um I often just walk away. I never wanted to be involved in what to say about it. <laughs> so what's the next live stream? I'm glad you asked. So I did now I did talk about th so th for my next idea I did I did uh, 
say I did um, talk about this particular series in two of my previous live streams. One of them is uh, for fighting and the other is a video games overall. And I have done plenty of those... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> plenty of... of plenty of uh, requests based on that franchise and I did say in one of my I did make a, po a DeviantArt journal about 12 things I probably won't do as a live stream theme hmm. because I worried this may cause me a bit of demonetization hmm. so um, but thanks to some change in the in the Thanks to some change in the uh, uh, YouTube guideline thing, and uh, I have a bit of a solution around this. As long as people don't request me, as I can still draw the characters as long as they don't request me, request anything to be super bloody and super gory. I wanted to say if you could send me what a cartoon drawers. You did so I could color the yucky duck I requested. No need really, I can color them off screen. I can I can color them off screen. Um, so um, where was I? Um, I can still draw the characters as long as it's not bloody or gory, and um, as long, and I have a better name for the for the I have a better name for the live stream compared to the last compared to the last one I had, and and. Um, <laughs> Let's just, well, it may not be a flawless victory, but um, yeah, at least it's something I can get around with. Okay, I think I've talked about long enough. So, <laughs> so is it going to be a flawless, victorious live stream next time? N not really, but it does have a flawless victory in it. So, yeah, so thank you for joining me. <laughs> Um, maybe I can put on yet another wacky live stream in the future. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for the donations. Thank you for the requests. I hope you've enjoyed this video.